morning, everybody. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, firstly, a big thank you to the team at Campaign for putting this on today. Um, having the opportunity to learn from everybody else in the industry is fantastic, so thank you very much. I have been in the industry, in the media industry, for the past 15 years. My first job uh, was at a media agency in London around 2005. I've had the good fortune of uh, being able to work across Europe in a regional capacity, and I've also had the good fortune of being able to work across Asia in a regional capacity. Um, today, I've been uh, asked to talk on the topic of media planning. Um, so I'm going to be very much focused on that and talking to marketeers. Um, as just mentioned, I am the MD for Initiative. And for those of you who don't know Initiative, we are a media planning buying agency. Um, we have some very solid partners across the region. So we've got good local brands like Etisalat, Mobile in uh, Saudi Arabia. And we also have some great international brands, which are Lego, Coty, Western Union, Delivery, etc. Just so I know who I'm talking to in the room, a quick show of hands um, on if you fall into one of these categories. So uh, do we have any bosses here today? Anybody in the C-suite? Okay. Anybody who's the brains of businesses, the marketing, media, creatives? Quite a few. Technologists, the beautiful people. Yeah. And the brawn, procurement. No? Okay. And the rest of you, I, get, I take it, work in agencies like myself or at suppliers. So as I said, I'm here to talk about media planning. Um, it's not as sexy as some of the other topics, um, but it is integral to the success of your business. And the real context here is media planning, planning in 2020. So trying to bring out some insights and some things to understand what's really going to impact you hopefully now as you're doing your 2020 planning. But if you're a little bit late, your 2020 planning, you're going to start soon. Really, so what I want to look at is what the economic outlook is going to be for 2020. I want to look at the associated marketing challenges that you're going to face in your businesses as a result of that. And I want to look at really the implications on how that translates into your media plans. What are the things that you need to do today to make sure that 2020 is um, going to be very successful? Let's talk about 2019 first before we get into 2020. Who thought 2019 was a good year? Somebody like on the left. Who thought 2020 was uh, like, sorry, like this, a bit too scary, like on, on the right hand side. For me, and having a look at all the businesses that we work with, 2020 was really a roller coaster year. And the big thing that was coming out was uncertainty. Um, our clients and, and everybody I spoke to in the industry were really a little bit unsure about what is going to happen, and therefore the business decisions that they make. Um, or also uh, a little bit reserved, and we start seeing a shift towards um, a conservative nature. But it wasn't all too bad. There are some really positive stories around 2019. We've got organisations around the world that are looking, and governments as well, that are looking at tackling you know, social issues, environmental issues. There's a lot of work being put into you know, the reduction of plastics. There's a lot of work being put into uh, gender equality, there's a lot of work that's going into some you know, fantastic initiatives that are really going to help us move forward. But at the same time, you know, the story of 2019 was also very negative. We have global trade wars going on, we have governments around the world taking very strong opposing positions when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, where their policies are being developed. Um, so from a business perspective, I think uh, it's very, from an economic perspective, 2019 was very challenging. Now, there's a debate to be had as to whether we're at the bottom of that cycle or whether we're actually going to go further into a little bit of a dip before we're able to come out of it. Now, the big theme really um, that will determine where we land, whether we're at the bottom of this negative cycle, or where, whether we're, we're going to go further into it, is kind of this 
fight that's playing out between governments and, and people that are globally minded or governments and people that are more nationalistic in nature and more internally focused. This really is going to determine what 2020 is going to be. So this is the big question before you know, CEOs, CFOs, governments can have the confidence to be able to make positive investment decisions. We really need to see what the flavor of the economy is going to be like post 2020. Now, for us in business, the real point at which we will get to gauge which direction or which flavor the 2021 economy is going to be is the election the American election in November, uh, on November 3rd, 2020. Now, unfortunately, if you think about it, that election is 84% of the way through the year. So before we get any certainty about what we're going to be able to do, the year is pretty much over. So as businesses, we're going to sit here for another year, pretty much in limbo before we understand which direction that global economy is going to go. But as marketeers, we've still got to get on with the job, okay? Now, the uncertainty that that period is going to bring to us has a couple of real um, strong effects that, that are realized here in the region. One is that when we, we do business in a period of uncertainty, there was downward pressure on oil. Now, although the governments around the region are trying to um, reduce our dependence on oil, we're still there, right? So downward pressure on oil hurts the economic environment that we operate in today. When governments and businesses have less money to spend, there's less money in the economy, there's less money in the ecosystem, okay? So we're seeing that with, um, you know, especially in Saudi Arabia, although they're making investment, we're seeing a reduced level of investment from previous times, and we're seeing the knock on effect of that on the economy. When there's less money in the economy, consumers do two things. They save more and they spend less. For people, for marketeers who are trying to sell products and services, this isn't obviously great news. There's less to do, there's less customers out there to be had, and we have to work harder to be able to get those customers. We do that by, more often than not, discounting what we do, offering cheaper prices. And I think everybody in the room has probably felt that pressure. You know, whether you're in an agency business like me and there's pressure on the fees that we have, whether you're selling retail products, or whether you're a supplier selling inventory. We all feel that this is happening. Now, when this happens, when there's a perfect storm, when you've got oversupply of property, when you've got the huge amount of expats leaving a market like Saudi Arabia, something starts to happen, which we haven't experienced for a long time, which is deflation. So, I think, you know, moving towards 2020, one of the other challenges that we're going to have to face is that um, for the products and services that we're selling, we really come, we come under pressure. Our pricing power comes under pressure, okay? So we're looking at a year, no, sorry. Um, we're looking at a year which has got, you know, tough economic outlook. We're looking at a year where our budgets are probably going to be reduced even further than they were in 2009. And we're looking at a year where our pricing power is going to come under question. There's, there are some bright spots. There are some great events that we're going to be able to plan around and that may uplift the economy. You know, a lot of hopes on, on Expo 2020, but I don't think that's going to be really enough to be able to reverse the trend that we're currently on. So the first prediction is that the headwinds that we're facing in business are going to strengthen. So as marketeers, we need to prepare for that. It's no longer a case of wait and see, it is start planning to make sure that you're in a position to do that, okay? Your CFOs are going to seek safety, they're going to take, try to take money away from you, you're going to have to do a lot more with a lot less. So let's talk about the marketing challenges. I see two broad marketing challenges that um, our clients and the people in the industry are really struggling to tackle. Okay, this is a very tough level. But one is balancing the investment in technology versus investment in what I call working media. Okay? So in, there's a lot of pressure on marketeers to be um, digitally, 
something to be mature and to adopt all the latest technologies, put the right tracking in place, put the DMP in place, put all the, all the kit that you need to be able to say that you're a digital advertiser. There's a huge amount of cost that comes with that. First, the need to generate sales today. The need to take money and in a kind of old school way, make a bet and go out and put that advertising in front of people. The other challenge that people try to tackle is the balance between short-term investment and long-term investment, okay? So a lot of clients, because there's a huge amount of pressure on from their business to generate revenue, they're actually trying to you know, shift everything to the short term. And from a media planning perspective, we see the long-term component being ignored or being forgotten about for now. So the idea of brand building has really kind of dissipated over the past few years and everybody is focused on, because it's trackable, I need to go out and invest in that and that's where I'm going to go. So I just want to unpack a bit about technology to begin with. Technology is important um, and you've probably been introduced to the BCG framework by Google. Most, I think, clients around the region have been. Um, basically what the, the framework is, is um, a pathway to becoming a mature or a connected uh, advertiser. And there's good reasons for becoming a connected advertiser. It does or they have shown that it does increase efficiency and it does bring cost, uh, increase revenue as well. But at what cost? This is the thing, there's a huge amount of cost to technology and not every single industry needs to be a digitally savvy advertiser. There are some sectors that really, you're better off taking the money and you're better off putting it into working media. But there is a place for that. On the discussion between short term and long term. Does anybody know these two people? Mark Ritson, yeah, if you're familiar. It used to be that there was a big discussion around marketing theory. When I first started in the industry, we used to debate this and we used to really talk about what marketing was. In those 15 years, I've seen the conversation really shift towards just tactics and technology. We no longer talk about marketing strategy. What we talk about is, do you have your tracking in place? What's the last click attribution? And you do it like, what, what's the attribution model that you're doing? So these two are kind of very publicly debating the future of, um, of marketing. Byron Sharp on one side, he says that you do not need to be doing targeting, that mass reach campaigns are the way forward. On the other side, Mark Rissen says you've got a segment, you've got a target, and you've got to position your product particular to that, uh, that, that target that you're doing. So mass versus target. These two guys, um, they sit on top of a huge data pool in the UK, which is the Effectiveness Awards. They've looked at 15,000 cases to try to determine what's the right mix between mass and what's the right mix between target. So what they figured out was there's two ways that really it works. One is that there's the short-term focus where you put money into something like say search and you see an immediate response on that money that goes into market. And this, the focus of these campaigns are pretty much six months at most. And that's what I think the majority of us are doing, especially in these economic times. The other thing they said is we've noticed that the brands who actually build volume over time, they invest in long-term strategies. They're investing in strategies two, three years down the road, which is about building brand equity. Okay. So both ideally should need to work together, but I think the, 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 the tendency when, when the economic output is tough is to really focus on that short term, short term and forget about the long term. So this is pretty much where we're at now and we need to be in a combination of this, okay? So these two things really start coming together. The, the two big problems that marketers are facing really combine, right? Technology is forcing us into a short-term thinking pattern and the long-term is kind of being forgotten about. So you see this transition of all our budgets being pushed into, say, Google, into Facebook. It used to be said that nobody would be sacked for buying an IBM computer. Pretty much, it's the same today. You'll never be sacked if you recommend Google on a, on a media plan. 
there's just a default position. Without too much thinking, I'm spending on digital, I'm going to spend on Google, I'm just going to spend on Facebook. But it's not necessarily the best thing for your brand. Okay. In 2014, this was uh, an article published which said Adidas is going to shift all their money to digital. And you might think that makes sense. Adidas is a trendy brand, digital brand, and youth are on the internet. This is, well, this makes sense to me. 2019, just recently, Adidas were brave enough to come out and said, we made a mistake. Hands up, we've over-invested in digital. It wasn't the right thing for our business. Okay. So the prediction number, number two is that you're facing these tough times. You've got choices to make. You've got investment in technology. You've got uh, investment in short-term versus long-term. You've got a lot more decisions to make that are high-pressure decisions, okay? So we need to figure out how to know what decisions to make. I imagine that, um, I imagine that this is the face of the CFO at Adidas when he was just told that guys, we're changing strategy, we're going to go back into offline. Everything that we've been telling you about digital didn't really work out the way that we thought it was going to work out. Okay? Now, this is, a, this is carrying on the Adidas story. And some very interesting um, verbatims um, which Adidas released, which was, you know, they're saying, we're not a sophisticated advertiser. We weren't doing the very basics of what was needed to be able to measure the impact of our advertising. And the key thing that they figured out that they were missing was econometric model. Something that really has been forgot about in the, the kind of modern era, I would say. Like everybody's focused on technology, everybody's focused on that, they're focused on digital attribution. They're not focused on the broad correlations between media. So he says here, you know, Adidas have been too focused on digital attribution. We look at the short-term measurements in real time. They got addicted to give me a report back. I've just spent money yesterday. What happened today? Okay, so for media planning, the implication on media planning for your 2020 is ask yourself this question. What is my focus? Am I too focused on the short term? Do I have a long-term strategy? If I have a long-term strategy, what is the best media to be able to grow that? Is it digital or actually is it a more integrated approach where I'm looking at big format software? Okay. So, you know, what in their story, what they very interesting, you know, they're trying to drive e-commerce um, sales. They their econometric story told them that actually it's offline driving online sales. And that was the big opportunity for them, was to be able to go back and address, just because they've got an e-commerce shop or an e-commerce uh, goal, it doesn't mean that it's just digital that you have to employ to be able to make that come to life. It's a combination of everything. So the prediction the, for media planning the implication is that we need to start looking at this because every single sale next year is going to count. You are going to be under pressure. You're, you're going to have to um, prove to your CFO that you know the decisions that you're making are right. So that's the prediction or kind of statement is, is make it count. Make everything that we do next year count by understanding how to measure it. Okay, so just wrapping up with one minute to go. Three things. It's going to be tough. 2020 is going to be tougher than what you think. Sorry to say that, but I think that's what's going to happen. You're going to have to do more with less from a marketing perspective. You've got more decisions to make, whether it's technology, long-term, short-term investment. Understand what actually, what tools you can use to understand if your investment is working for your business long-term or not. It's not about just last week attribution, it's understanding about the investment over time. Thank you very much.